For half of the world's whale species, New Zealand waters are a popular place to hang out, except when they get too close to shore and get stranded. Some make it back to sea, some aren't so lucky. But there is a silver lining for marine scientists at Te Papa. The remains of stranded whales provide clues about the private life of our ocean's heavyweights. This species is particularly mysterious, and it's gathered quite a crowd. A lot of species of whales are only known from strandings, or very little is known of them in the wild, so a lot of what we know about them is inferred from strandings. This is a rare pygmy right whale. Over five days, curator Anton van Helden and a research team from Otago University will measure, dissect and take tissue samples. The pygmy right whale is very rare and found only in and around the Southern Ocean and we just don't know much about it. Don't really know where it belongs in the bigger picture of whale relationships. So when we get a specimen like this, we can learn a great deal from it in terms of um, how it goes together and how it works. Some of the whale's organs will be preserved in jars. The dried skeleton will be a valuable addition to the museum's extensive collection. One of the very first specimens that was really described was from New Zealand, and so that was a small skull described by Sir James Hector, who started the Colonial Museum, which is now Te Papa, and started this collection back in 1865. Later in 1874, they got a complete skeleton, an entire pygmy right whale that was collected from Stewart Island. The interesting thing was when they put the skeleton together, they assumed that the ribs behaved uh, like any other whale ribs. But what we know now is that the pygmy right whales have this a, extraordinary extra number of ribs, and they have a whole series of them which overlap uh, like plates, almost like armour plating. All up, they have about 18 pairs of ribs, which is a really large number for any whale. Really the only other species that have these strange overlapping ribs are things like uh, pangolins and uh, armadillos, uh, which is used to stiffen the body. So this really gives us uh, some idea that maybe this is used for stiffening the body, which would tell us something about how the animal swims. But who knows? Pygmy right whales just stand out. Whenever you start to explore them, you see, find new features which you, you wouldn't imagine. Superficially, a pygmy right whale looks a bit like a right whale. It has an arched mouth, it has this long, thin baleen. But unlike a right whale, for instance, it has a dorsal fin, which no other right whale has. And when we start looking into the anatomy and start looking at maybe the evolutionary relationships of this whale to other species of whale, it starts becoming very unclear. Because pygmy right whales are so rarely seen, every stranding represents an, an opportunity to uncover new information. We've only done a few really thorough dissections, and it's, so it's very exciting. Each time we have new questions to, to ask, and we'll continue to ask those for some time, I'm sure. Museums have been researching pygmy right whales since the late 1800s. The earliest specimens are still a valuable record of the species. A stranded juvenile is Te Papa's latest addition, so even over a hundred years on, researchers can continue to discover their secrets. Yeah.